Hello, and welcome back to the Waban Podcast. I am your host, Nim, and I am joined here by a depressed alcoholic horse. I can't do the noise. What is it? Can't do. There we go. Can't do a horse noise. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I see. That's what I was. I wasn't sure how you would react. I was like, either he's going to just do a, like a horse noise, mm-hmm. or he's going to try to like mimic BoJack himself. Well, like uh, the the show does this every once in a while. He does the, that horse noise, but it's like he uses it as a like a depressed sigh. Yeah, yeah. No, it, they do. They do. Yeah. Um, it's 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 pretty pretty cool i actually like that they use how they use that um but anyways so yeah we watched the first season of bojack horseman um i mean we already know that i love it um i've seen it before it's you know um yeah um so i guess before we get started i was just gonna ask you generally what what's your general uh thought of the show so far before we get into details I'm not hooked yet. I don't particularly like it, but I don't hate it. I'm at the point where, like, if I was watching this on my own, I'd probably watch one more season before I decided whether or not to drop Mm -hmm. it. Yeah. I I think it definitely gets better after this season, too. So Mm -hmm. um, you might like it more as it goes on. Um, Because the thing is, this season really only scratches the surface with the real like deep stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think it gets more interesting as it goes on, especially, and I don't know if you noticed, if you kind of noticed sort of a, a different thing, like if you noticed this, but I feel like the first half of this season is a little, like there's not a lot going on in terms of the story and stuff. It's more just kind of, yeah. And I then I saw that a little bit at least. Yeah. And then once you get close to the halfway point, it really, the story starts to pick up and more interesting things I think start to happen and, mm-hmm. and stuff. Um, but yeah, so we can go through each individual episode, same way we did with avatar. Um, I don't know if we're going to talk about each one as long as we did when we did avatar. I don't know. We'll see. Um, so the first episode <clears throat> is titled, bojack horseman the bojack horseman story chapter one um so i mean it's it's basically just them introducing introducing bojack right yeah it's i mean it's the introduction it introduces the characters the Mm -hmm. the basic story you know the the plot of the first season which is the the book that he's trying to write that's sort of like the main plot thread that's going through the whole first season uh, and like he gets a ghost writer who's Diane. So it's, it's him meeting Diane who is, mm-hmm. I mean, she's in a, a character throughout the whole show. So it's like, uh, yeah. So it kind of opens with them meeting. That's sort of how the show starts. Um, and they very much drive home the, uh, he was once famous on TV and now he's not doing anything. And yes. he's very stuck on that one TV show. Cause he's watching it like throughout the entire episode. Yeah, I mean, and you see, and it's not even just this episode. He does that a lot throughout yeah. the rest of the season, too. Like, you see him, like, he's always, like, watching back and, like, reminiscing over the show. Because that was, you know, again, that's the high point of his career. That's really, you know, mm-hmm. um, that's the only reason he is famous at all is because of that show, right? Yeah. Because, um, like, he didn't, like, grow up famous or anything like that. He's not, like, you know. Um, yeah, so, I mean, that's sort of the idea of it is, like that he's this, you know, washed up has been kind of, and sort of how that affects his mental state in a a lot of ways. And like, Mm. it's like, despite the fact that he was famous once, like he's kind of lonely. Um, Yeah. So they, they do a pretty good job at, at setting those ideas up. Although like, I think the first few episodes are a little rough because I think in the first few episodes, they focus a lot on the comedy side of it, which is like, and not even like, I don't know. I feel like the comedy gets better as it goes along too. I don't know if you would say that. I don't. I mean, the last half of this season was decent. 
if if the entire show was just like the first half of the season, I probably would have yeah already dropped if I was watching on my own. Yeah, yeah. I think well, and that's an actually a really interesting thing is when this season first came out, um a lot of the critic reviews, the first reviews that came out weren't very good reviews because uh, and this is this was like a common practice that a lot of critics would do back then with when rating shows was they would watch like the first six episodes or the first half of a season or something along those lines and then mm-hmm. give it the season a ra- rating based on that. So a lot of the critics only watched the first six episodes. They gave their rating based on that. And then when those same critics eventually went back and watched the rest of the season, they ended up changing their ratings. So they actually changed it. So now for, I don't remember where this was. I don't remember if it was like IMDb or where, what it was, like what critic mm-hmm. website it was. I don't remember exactly what it was, but so now they, they change it. So they're like, okay, you actually have to watch a whole season before giving a rating, which I mean, I feel like that should be, yeah. Um, <laughs> that should go without saying, but yeah, so it, it's always kind of been understood uh, that the first half of the season is definitely the worst of the season. And it's also like the first half of this season is also, I think, the worst of the entire show as well. Mm. Um, and, and I think a lot of that was just, you know, the creators were just getting started. They're trying to sort of find their footing and find out what the show was kind of, yeah. you know, set um, up for everything else. Yeah. And, and, and that's the way it is with a lot of shows. Like they start out rough and then they get good kind of like, like a lot of people don't really like, like if you look at shows like um, the office, for instance, that's really popular. Everybody loves it. But like a lot mm-hmm. of people say, Oh, the first season isn't that good. I mean, I still like the first season. It, the first season was only like six, a six episode, six episodes just to test the show out kind of. But like people say like, yeah, the first six episodes in the first season wasn't very good. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's like a, it's like that with a lot of shows where people are like, yeah, the first one, you know, even like if you look at something like Avatar, it's really good throughout the whole thing. But the first season is clearly the right weakest we went into that because it was right. still uh, episodic and not a cohesive story yeah 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 it's it's yeah it's clearly the the weakest one you know like Mm -hmm. it's still really good i still really love it but like um so yeah it is interesting but yeah i mean this episode sets it up and i i kind of like how it opens though i do like that like it opens with him doing that like interview and he's just like a complete asshole which i mean (laughs) that was actually kind of funny um Mm -hmm. So like, are you telling me you're drunk right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I parked in a handicapped spot. Is that okay? Uh, no. <laughs> Why would you do that? Um, yeah, it's – it um, sets it up right away. Uh, sets up – well, it sets up sort of his personality right away, which I, I think is a really important thing in the show is like his – that he's just a complete – like asshole nobody like yeah um yeah. that's actually a really important thing um it, it's it's odd to say because like usually characters are you know intricate and blah 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 but while he is intricate the main point of the story is he is an asshole yeah yeah um yeah it it, it is actually really and that's really important for the future of the show. Cause like, it, it is really interesting to see where they, what they do with that, um, as it goes on. Um, but yeah, so mm. I, yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about the first episode. I mean, there's like, uh, some stuff going on. Um, you meet all the characters. Um, I don't really, we don't have to get in depth with each character or anything, but we can move on. So mm-hmm. the second episode is Bojack hates the troops. Um, right. I will say the premise for this episode, I actually think is pretty funny. Um, the, the, like <laughs> the muffin thing, like, yeah, I had yeah. dibs. <laughs> um, that, that is kind of funny. Um, I don't know. Again, this is sort of like the early episodes of the season. I feel like a lot of the episodes aren't super important for the story. Yeah. Yeah. This, this one kind of just like 
solidifies aspects of Bojack's personality, like stubbornness and, you know, yeah. holelessness. Yeah. Yeah. It really, it really does. Um, and, and it also sort of really establishes like, he's like, he, 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 he uh, he he like gets the muffins then he eats all of them on the way home you know it's like shows mm-hmm. he has like no self respect and like he's he's very like yeah you know and the fact that he bought the muffins just out of spite right <laughs> what do they have a lot of saturated fat and i'm going to regret this what do they have a lot of saturated fat in them oh look they do have a lot of saturated fat in them <laughs> why did i buy these <laughs> yeah um yeah yeah so yeah, I don't, yeah, I don't really have a lot to say about the episode other than like I, I think the premise is pretty funny. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Having a Navy SEAL who's actually a SEAL just complain about dibs yeah. on muffins for twenty minutes. Yeah, sure. Yep. Yeah, sure. And then the I like the um the 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 news anchor, the whale. whale. Yeah, yeah. Um, he he shows up throughout like the whole show. Like he's in you know mm-hmm. all future seasons and stuff as like this news anchor. And, a lot, of, a lot of those parts are always funny. Yeah, um, and he always complains about who's writing his uh, headlines, and it's always Randy. Yeah, Randy. Did Randy do this? Who came Did up with this? Randy? Was it Randy? <laughs> um, yeah, that 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 continue. That's like an ongoing joke throughout the the show as well. Mm-hmm. They um, have a lot of like little ongoing jokes that like that that I do appreciate. Yeah, I I think they they do a good. They have a lot of um, one thing I like is a lot of their like little you just see little jokes here and there mm-hmm. that are like blink and you miss some jokes that have to do with like the like animal jokes, basically about like the yeah. fact that they're animals um, like sometime later on in the season, there's like a party or something. Maybe it was like that. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it was like the Diane and Mr. Peanut Butter's wedding or something. I don't remember. There was like a sheep. And then a mm-hmm. wolf comes up with a shirt on that says sheep and the goes to talk to the – like it's a wolf in sheep's clothing. Mm-hmm. Or like <laughs> the groundskeeper is like a ram or a sheep or something and he eats all of like the plants and grass as he's right. keeping yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of like – yeah, there's a lot of little uh, little things like that. Again, again, like the, the fact that it's like the Navy SEAL is a SEAL, mm-hmm. you know, things like that. I did also notice this first episode, uh, his agent, the pink cat, what was her mm-hmm. name, princess, whatever. Princess Carolyn. Carolyn, okay. But uh, she calls him, and then he's put on hold by her, like, assistant yeah. every time. Yeah. And it's always, what is it, a cat's theme from the play or the movie? Yeah, or yeah, it's like her, her, re- yeah, her um, ringtone is a is and it's it's that way throughout the entire show her ringtone is a song from cats yeah Mm -hmm. um that is one thing you notice there's like a lot of like each character has like they make each character have their own like unique ringtone in the show which is kind of cool like like hers is the cats theme uh bojack's i believe is i i'm pretty sure the theme song from horsing around probably i think Mm -hmm. um and like mr peanut butters is the theme song from the show he was in mm. um and like print or um diane's is always different hers are always some weird like yeah monologue that has to do with like I, books I, or I, writing or something weird like that i only remember one thing it's like there's a story every everything has a story in your phone story right now is it is ringing yeah her, hers changes i think hers changes throughout the show but it's always like something like that mm-hmm. um and then todd's is just Ta 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 ta! <laughs> like, <laughs> um, I like that they put the put attention to the detail of like each character's ringtone mm-hmm. being like a unique thing. I, I think that's pretty cool. And I actually didn't know when I first watched it that Princess Carolyn's was a song from Cats. I, I don't remember when I found that out, and I was like, oh, I don't, I don't even remember like ever watching Cats or like remembering any of the songs. But my brain was just like, yeah, that's from Cats. Like okay, how do you know that? <laughs> how do you know that? Yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't remember when I found out, but I was like, oh, and then when I made that connection. So I, mm. I, I do like that. The, there's a lot of attention to detail in the show. 
Uh-huh. Um, to like little, little things and little ongoing jokes that I really like. Um, but yeah, so we could probably move on to the third episode, mm-hmm. which is prickly muffin, which is about right. Sarah Lynn, who is like the, you know, was a child actor on horsing around and now, you know, grew up to be like, mm-hmm. uh, well, she grew up, became like a, a pop star, you know, whatever. Which is like I, there was definitely a huge commentary on like what happens to a lot of like child actors, like child like Disney Channel stars and stuff. Like yeah, they grow up and really, go crazy and whatever, and um, become yeah, addicted to exactly drugs a, and stuff. A safe environment to grow up, right? Yeah, or and, just and a sustainable environment yeah. to grow up. Well, I mean, you do see there's that moment where like a show at the beginning of the episode where it like shows the back the backstory it shows like when she's a girl on the show and like Bojack's like what I forget exactly what he says to her, but it's essentially like a like you have to keep the act going and give the people what they want or else they will eat you alive. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um but I, I think it's 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 funny that like so you you see the cut so the the episode is called um prickly muffin so you see that like on the show that was like her character's nickname he's like like bojack would you know on the on the show mm-hmm. he'd be like oh how's my prickly muffin doing like her cute little girl nickname mm-hmm. um and then later on when she she does a song <laughs> like when she becomes like a musical artist she's like and when she's older she's like don't touch my prickly muffin <laughs> and like mm-hmm. her song <laughs> or like you kind of like touch my prickly muffin like it's it's funny how they change the context of that <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's clever. Um, but I don't know. This episode is kind of so. Basically, she comes back in Bojack's life because now she's kind of a washed up has been in a way because mm-hmm. she's she's you know not so her deep. her music career isn't as famous anymore. Yeah. Um, and she's apparently dating Andrew Garfield, so that's interesting. Uh huh. And he hates Mondays and likes lasagna. I love that part. Yeah. Andrew Garfield hates Mondays and loves lasagna. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, yeah. So basically, I, I don't really know what to say about this episode. I mean, I, I guess that's the main takeaway from the episode is like seeing how damaged her character is. Yeah. Um, and how like, like, uh, Bojack wants to like almost take her in as like a father figure because mm-hmm. he looks, even though he's probably not a good father figure, you know, <laughs> like he's not a good yeah, influence. Not at all. Um, especially since he like has sex with her in this episode. Um, <laughs> and I love the part where Todd's just like, Oh no, guys, you should stop this. You should stop this. Oh no. Oh, get, oh, oh no. At least get my no. No, oh no. no. I'm in on this. I'm in on this now. Oh no. I'm part of it. <laughs> Poor Todd. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah. yeah. Okay, is this a joke that I don't get? But why were all the people at the party monkeys and lemurs? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, I really don't know. I, I think I, that's I, just like, I what they went they, with. They're all, the, they're all lemurs. Why? Is this a joke? I want in on a joke. There might be a joke to it. I don't I don't really know. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not... I'm not it sure. It me crazy the entire um, episode, but I couldn't figure it yeah. out. Yeah. Well, there, there's also another little thing, detail in this episode that I like. Uh, so it's like, so throughout the episode, Princess Carolyn is like constantly trying. She realizes that like, um, she like fired her agent or got whatever agent she had mm-hmm. or something. I don't know. And so she's like, oh. Uh, you know, she's in need of a new age. Sarah Lynn is in need of a new agent. And so like, she's constantly trying to get it, get her to choose her as her new agent, uh, which kind of adds to like the whole idea of like princess Carolyn's character, which is that she's like an extreme, like workaholic. Like she's, she's like constantly like, you know, on the grind trying to get, get clients yeah. and trying to get, you know, uh, <clears throat> Which is in one of the interesting parts of her character. Um, but we can move on if you don't have much else to say about the episode. Uh, not really, no. Mm. So next is episode four, which is Zoe's and Zelda's. Which Yikes. Wayne. 
Who's Wayne? Hi, I'm Wayne. <laughs> yeah, hi, I'm Wayne. Uh, yeah, it's um, Diane's ex-boyfriend. Right. Um, I was writing a BuzzFeed article about Zoe's and Zelda's because that was the characters from Mr. Peanut Butter's TV show. Yeah, that, that ripped r- off. That ripped Bojack's off Bojack's show. TV show. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I love all the references to like sitcom tropes in this where they're like um like they they reference a lot of like different like things that are like normal Mm -hmm. i don't know like sitcom tropes and stuff any friends fan or like you know what friends character are you yeah yeah so that's Um, no years out yeah um, one thing I actually do really like how what the, sh- the one thing that that a lot of people say about the show is like so the whole idea of BoJack's show being like this family friendly sitcom mm-hmm. is interesting because it's it's sort of juxtaposed like that show is sort of juxtaposed against this actual show the show BoJack Horseman because um. it's like in the in the sitcom world you're sort of like everything you know you have one problem that's suddenly solved by the end of the episode so everything can go back to normal for the next episode but this show Mm -hmm. is but the bojack horseman is very different it's like everything has consequences that carry on throughout more episodes and you see that Mm -hmm. much more as the show goes on as well um very often the problem that is posed in the episode isn't solved like the third episode yeah exactly like she's goes on and is unable to yeah. Jokes and ruin her yeah life. exactly and you see that progress later on in the show as well you see what what ends up coming of that too mm-hmm. um i'm not gonna like say you know spoil anything necessarily um but yeah it's i i, I like the juxtaposition there of like that the ho- horsing around compared to bojack horse you know it's a very um mm-hmm. one takes a more realistic look where like bojack horseman's a more realistic look where it's like things aren't always just solved in a nice neat little bow at the end of the day you know like there are lasting consequences there are lasting issues i think that's part of why bojack keeps revisiting that like watching the show again and 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 stuff Mm -hmm. like that because he he really wants life to be that simple in a way it's like a very like yeah interesting thing Mm -hmm. um so i really like how the show kind of does that like juxtaposes those two things uh it's really interesting but anyways so i forget the, what the main premise of this episode was so this is the episode where todd is doing his rock opera right um so this i guess is like this actually has consequences in the rest of the episode or the rest of the season yeah yeah so so Todd is, you know, Bojack, it's it's kind of, it's so far in the show, you kind of see Todd as just this guy who just kind of just hangs out, right? Like, that's all mm-hmm. he is, right? He just hangs out at Bojack's house, has no real job or aspirations, whatever. Yeah, except for the times when he flashes back to getting, like, tortured by the mafia, but, you know, yeah, he's yeah, 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 besides that. Um, but it's, <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so, oh, was I, I, I just like blanked on what I was going to say. Oh yeah. So, so this episode sort of shows that he does have other sort of aspirations, but it's like, they're overshadowed by the way he views himself. Like, it's almost like he views himself as just a screw up who can never really who, who's never going to have any real aspirations so he doesn't even try mm-hmm. because bojack kind of bojack kind of feeds into that like with like all the the way he treats him he's always like oh todd mm-hmm. clean up your mess that's terrible blah 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 yeah yeah um so he's he just kind of yeah um and you kind of realize as it goes on that the reason why bojack doesn't encourage him to go out and do much is because he likes having todd there as like yeah. a friend like he it, it it helps fight his loneliness mm-hmm. um so it's actually really interesting um 
Yeah. And like he even like talks to Di- he Diane tries to get him to open up about that in the episode too. And he's mm-hmm. like, oh, he just crashed on my couch once and he's been here ever since, whatever. And she's like, oh, I think you don't want him to leave. And he's like, oh, it's no, I would love for him to leave. And she's like, fine, I'll help him with his, his rock opera. Um, I, and- I do like the progression of him supporting him. Because at first it's just like, everything is terrible. But it could not be terrible. And then it's just like, that is a genius idea. Let's get it down. Yeah. And then by the end, he actually puts together something that's like actually good, you know, because like they Mm -hmm. have the guy, the rock opera guy, you know, the moose guy. Yeah. Come in. Pretentious moose. To listen to it. Um and he's like, oh, this is good. You should present it to these uh, you know, people in the business or whatever. Mm. Um, and that's when Bojack decides to sabotage by hiring character actress Margot Martindale. Yeah, they, they, they really drive that home, don't they? Yeah. Well, she, she, she makes appearances throughout the rest of the show, too. Um, mm. And she's always like a really hilarious character. It's just – so – it's it's actually funny because character actress Margot Martindale is a real person, and I think it might be voiced by the real Margot Martindale. I, it probably, I won't be surprised. Um, so, like, the main joke is that it's like, oh, it's a character actress, so it's like nobody knows her like name, like she's not famous. Like, when people say character actor, it usually means somebody who's like ve- gets very deep in their character to the point where they're unrecognizable to themselves. Kind of that's sort of the. Uh... So I that's think, why she like fully like dove in on yeah. being a bank robber and then going to jail yeah. and being the crazy person in jail. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's voiced by the real Margot Martindale, I think. Mm. And like, she's, <laughs> it's like, okay, that's... so she's okay with being portrayed as this kind of, uh, <laughs> that's really kind interesting because it, because you kind said of insane char- person. Well, she's a character actor, so she gets really deep in character, but yeah. she's getting really deep into being herself as a character. But who's not, then getting right? Be very deep in their own characters. Yeah, but it's funny because it's like she's playing. It's like voicing herself, but not what she's actually like. It's just this yeah. show's version of herself. Because obviously, she's not, you know, really the way she is in the show. But um. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I I, I love uh, just her character popping up throughout the show, like the rest mm-hmm. of the show. Like she's never like a main character or anything. She just kind of is like in these small roles throughout it and stuff. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I don't know what else to say about that episode, so we could probably move on if you want. I do want to comment on the game that he relapsed into addiction on. You know, looked like. I don't know, it looked like some like big badass game. Blah, oh, yeah, blah. it's Decathlon. It, yeah. And, <laughs> and he starts it playing like, it, and it's like Tetris or something. Yeah, Tetris with like weird shapes. <laughs> like and like bacon squiggles. He's like, and yeah, like, Decathlon, let's go. And then he starts playing, and he's like, come on, go. And then he's just like, it's Tetris thing. Mm-hmm. It's hilarious. Uh, um, <clears throat> so the next episode is five fast Diane Nguyen. So this is where we get to know Diane's backstory a little bit. So, Oh, right. Yeah. This so is they, where they go and meet her family, right? Yes. Yes. Um, they're like V her family. So she's like a Vietnamese. Her family's like Vietnamese immigrants or whatever with one mm-hmm. adopted kid, uh, who's a black sheep. Uh, I love the joke where he's like, um, so you're like the black sheep of the family. Oh no. Uh, what's his name? The black sheep. <laughs> he was mm. adopted <laughs> cause he's actually a black sheep. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so her dad died. Um, she doesn't really care cause she's like, ah, whatever. He's a jerk anyways. So it's, it's, you start to learn about that. Um, yeah, I remember when they're at the funeral home, like she described her deadbeat dad and it's like, okay, this is the deadbeat dad package. <laughs> nah, no, nah, no, nah, that's too good for him. Then I have a special package for you. Deadbeat dad would be too good for him. Package, like okay, yeah. what? a piece of shit dad package. Yeah, um, yeah. So, and you start to realize how like kind of annoying her family is too. Mm-hmm. 
Um, Can't look up watching the game. <laughs> oh yeah, that guy. It's like it's like weird because it's like they she comes and they expect her to like do everything mm-hmm. for the funeral and stuff. They're like, oh, why do we gotta do it? And she's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> um, and then she does all yeah. this work to set up the funeral, and then they go behind her back and just kind of like Turn do something different, anyways, and don't even show up to the funeral they set up. Mm-hmm. They're they're all very unique. I don't quite remember what the black sheep's uh, bit was, but the one was never look up from the game, and the other one was trying to be supportive of Diane and be like, you know, yeah, we're there for you. And she says like something on commenting or like trying to get their help, and he immediately reverts back to, "What do we gotta do stuff?" Yeah, 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 yeah. There's there, there's like kind of like little personalities of each one kind of set up here. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's it's interesting because like they they have the it's like that type of family dynamic where they're just like oh yeah you're just such a you think you're too good for the family you're such you know big shot Diane over in Hollywood you know and they're like mm-hmm. <laughs> um uh, I I do also love the blind patriotism of uh you know you know most of the jobs going to immigrants these days and she's like. We are immigrants. Like, where do you get that from? We're Vietnamese. I'm a pure-blooded American. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Extreme sitcom like portrayal of it is Uh, yeah. Almost like I don't know. It's it's like the theater episode in Avatar. It's like, yeah, that's kinda true. Yeah. People are like that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, yeah. <sighs> um, yeah. What one one bit that I always found funny though was so the opening of the episode, mm-hmm. they're like going to the airport to like go to see her family. Is I think. Yeah, because it's like they're going to New York to talk about the book or whatever, anyways. And that's right, they, they right. then they go to see her family while they're there. That's right. So they he's going on the plane and he has he's like the 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 metal detector goes off and he just like pulls out a gun and he's just like oh maybe it's this everybody's like relax it's a lighter he just has a light it's like a flamethrower (laughs) and then diane goes through and just she's just like how'd you get through so fast Oh, I followed the basic rules of air travel that have been in place for over a decade. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's that easy. Yep, exactly. I think I've been on. I've been on a few flights. Yeah. I luckily no one, no one in my family that we were traveling with ever had trouble in the, like, yeah, airport security. And neither did anybody hold up the line all that much, so we got lucky. Yes. Um, no, I love his like attitude towards it though, where he's like, he's like, he, he like he pulls out his his alcohol. He's like, how much can I carry? Or you know, he's like at the one part, he's like, how much lighter fluid can I carry on on the plane? And before you answer, remember, I am a celebrity. Like he mm-hmm. he's he's trying to pull the celebrity card to get what he wants, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> I, I, that is one thing I do like. There's like throughout the show, there's always these like little moments where some people are just like, hey, isn't that the horse from horsing around? Mm-hmm. <laughs> and like there's just like, oh, even like the uh, Diane's family are like fans like, it's the freaking horse from horsing around. <laughs> <laughs> you met Ben Affleck? Yeah. <laughs> Hear that, Ma? Ben Affleck eats grapes. He doesn't eat grapes. <laughs> yep. Uh, uh, is... Just treating celebrities as like alien beings. Yeah, pretty much. Um, I mean, when you're like, I feel like the when you're that level of like stupidity and like just kind of like. I don't know, mm-hmm. not even not even stupidity, just that level of like where they're at ignorance. and ignorance. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you would view it that way because you don't really know. Like, I don't know. It's kind of like, 
Yeah. Yeah. It's weird. Because, like, I don't know. You should assume that everybody's human. So, you know, you, they might have their quirks and stuff, but they're still a, <laughs> a person. And, you know, yeah, it'll, it'll, they're still a person, so they might eat grapes. <laughs> yeah. Maybe they like grapes. Maybe they don't. Who cares? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, this show does a lot of, like, critiquing on, like, celebrity culture and like Hollywood, yeah. you know, the Hollywood celebrity culture type of thing, which I, I, I think, I think it does it pretty well. I really enjoy like a lot of their little like critiques on that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we can move on from this one if you want. Sure. Um, so next, Oh, the next one is episode six, which is our a story is a D story. So I don't, I don't remember what this, this is. This is the one where he steals the D right. from the Hollywood sign. They get in like this big, like. Yeah. Because Bojack's start having like what, like, what would you call it? Pseudo feelings for Diane. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Um, and, and it's it's interesting how like it's presented that the only reason he has feelings for her is because she's somebody who listens to him and seems to like care kind yeah, of right. and it's like like he hasn't had that in like so long and like he it just kind of open up to her so right yeah yeah exactly um so it's less of like real positive feelings for her more just like because you know it's somebody he can open up to so he just automatically mm. kind of uh feels that way but um yeah because this is I'm trying to remember. This isn't the one where, yeah. Actually, this is the one where they get engaged at the end, where Mister Peanut Butter and her get engaged at the very end. Because yes, so he yes. he steals the D, which I just think I think that story is pretty funny too. Um, steals the D from the Hollywood sign. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, this is also the episode where Todd is in prison. Right. Because the last episode. Oh, we forgot to mention the last episode was the David Boreanaz house thing. Which is also right. a pretty funny plot. <laughs> that, and that, okay, this isn't that like entire pre- like uh, start out with Dave Boreanaz house thing, then go to prison. None of that has anything to do with anything ever, does it? Not really. And then, like, because like at the end of the episode, he break they like everybody breaks out of prison. And it's like, okay, um, there's so like Todd is a character where like a lot of times he just has these weird shenanigans going on yeah. in the background for like comedy, like throughout the whole show. There's a lot of like things that he just mm-hmm. goes on these crazy like adventures and weird things happen. Um, I know I love in the prison, though, the whole like both gangs are trying to get him, but they play it like the classic sitcom trope of like two dates you have two dates to the pro i love Mm -hmm. i just think that's hilarious and he calls bojack to get advice because he's like hey bojack how how did you guys solve this problem on horsing around because you know every sitcom's done that my bail and he's like (laughs) nah nah just shut up and hangs up the phone just ignores him uh geez yeah I just, I just love that because <laughs> like the two groups are like, it's like the, I don't I don't remember. It's like, like the neo-Nazis and I don't know what the other like group the Latin was. Kings or whatever. Yeah. Or I don't know. There was like, yeah, the two different groups. Um, <laughs> I do love just, the moment where they're both about to curve stomp him. And so his upper jaw is like resting on the stairs. He's just like, see, you're not that different. <laughs> Because they're both about to, like, <laughs> yeah, you know, maim him. I like you both. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um. <laughs> I did. I never knew neo Nazis were so interested in Nazis. <laughs> Imagine that. Hmm. Yeah. Who would have guessed? <laughs> I also do love how he met the other group. Surprise cavity search. Whoa, buy a guy a drink first. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Yeah, it is pretty funny. Or like the I like the when he first gets into prison, he's like in line to get food, and the one guy's like, first day in prison, right? He's like, stick with me and you'll be just fine. That guy immediately and somebody comes up and immediately stabs that guy to death. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shanks him to death. Like <laughs> That guy, I don't know, that was, like, really brutal. Because the guy just, like, runs up and he has two <laughs> knives and he's just, like, a whirling dervish of blades for, like, half a second. Like, okay, cool. there's no ex- There's no explanation as to why he attacked him specifically, anything, just, nope, mm. that guy's dead now, okay. I don't know, I'm so used to, like everything in a show or a movie has some sort of meaning even if it's just like you know like even if it's like a throwaway joke there's still something there but this is just like yeah this entire bit of this episode is nothing but a throwaway joke yeah yeah i mean yeah i and and i think it's fine to have stuff like that you know i think it add it definitely adds to the uh comedy level i i just think the whole that whole him in prison thing is is really funny mm-hmm. um i also love how like at the end of the episode he like that he like like they they break out of prison he's like well that was a surprise he's like well <laughs> and they say there's no new stories in hollywood like that because the d was stolen everybody just calls it hollywood now yeah but he should have never been updated by why <laughs> because the, he's in prison yeah, the whole he time shouldn't know. uh i yeah no it's it's hilarious and the funny thing is they throughout the rest of the show they never returned the d mm. and everybody just calls it hollywood from now on in the rest of the show that's literally just what it is now it's just like oops what the hell <laughs> um yeah no I, I which is yeah so that's another running joke that starts in this episode but um mm-hmm. yeah so i guess like the main takeaway from this episode as far as story goes is like is um bojack sort of it, like falling for diane kind of thing right um, right and, and then, this, like, it sets off a whole chain of events with, like, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, Mr. Peanut Butter's movie that then Bojack will star in, and et cetera, et yeah, cetera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it's, um, so he, I think, was it, there was a part at the end of the episode where he, like, maybe it wasn't this one, which I don't know. I he like oh that's right he 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 calls Diane and like leaves her a message basically trying to say how he really feels about mm. about her and it was like you know I feel like you really know me and listen and care or whatever you know and it's like this really heartfelt like moment when he's like at the bar or whatever and she calls and tells him that he's engaged that she's engaged and he's just like ah, delete Netflix. that message mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, and she's like, okay, I'll delete it. Um, yeah. Just one of my drunken stupor messages again. But, and then you see he immediately goes to drinking to like keep, you know, to help him, which is sort of, I mean, that's a, I mean, his alcoholism is a huge theme throughout the show as well. Mm -hmm. Um, There was one joke earlier on. It's like, are you drunk already? Like Todd. I'm over, I weigh over a thousand pounds. It takes a lot to get me drunk. Then it like pulls away. You see a bunch of empty bottles. Yes. yes. <laughs> that was like, I think that was like first episode probably. Yeah. First or second, I think. Um, yeah. So anyways, the next episode is episode seven, which is say anything. Um, so this one focuses a lot on princess Carolyn her like career right. kind of so it opens with i think this is the episode that opens with like bojack's um alcohol bender that he goes on after finding out about diane mm-hmm. um yeah. <laughs> Prince, he wakes up and you're like looking from his point of view and she's giving him a pep talk yeah <laughs> She then she like goes through everything that happened and he's like, you found some some old guy. Hey, uh, here's this is John Stamos. That's not John Stamos. <laughs> Just some random homeless guy. Mm-hmm. Also, you were naked for a lot of this. 
Also, it wasn't here. It was in my office. <laughs> um, or like, uh, yeah, no, you had a Todd as your dick, and then you could drive her. But you made him drink, so. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So close. I feel bad for Todd because he, he gets drug ar- along with a lot of Bojack's like crazy things. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I th- I'm trying to remember exactly what's going on in this episode. So, yeah, most of it's focusing on sort of Princess Carolyn and, and her like career, right? So it's mm-hmm. – and Bojack is sort of like – Bojack is sort of like bounce, bouncing back from like the Diane thing, and he's suddenly like, "Hey, I'm supposed to be with you, Princess Carolyn." And there's like that whole thing, and yeah, oh right, there was the merger, and yeah. uh, the rival agent took Bojack as her client. And, she, yeah, yeah, and at some point in the end of the episode, uh, Princess Carolyn, Carolyn, Caroline, yeah, Princess Carolyn, yeah, Carolyn, okay. Uh, she was like, you know, no more feelings. I'm just going to be robot workaholic. And then she goes and like gets a ton of stuff done. But then at the end of the episode, she or like uh, assistant asks if she's going to go home. And she's just like, where would I go? Like, yeah. OK, cool. Great. That's heavy. And then she and then her phone is like, happy birthday, like has a happy birthday message on it. And she's like. Thank you, phone. Like, mm-hmm. this entire day was her birthday, and like nobody else knew. Kind of, it's so that you know. So Bojack's not the only character that suffers from loneliness. You know, yeah. it's kind of like, um, and her loneliness there, but their loneliness comes from a different, uh, a different place, right? Where Bojack's mm-hmm. is, you know, he doesn't really do anything and he's very self-loathing and he's very good at like pushing people away just because of how much he hates himself and all this, you know, issues and stuff. Yeah. He's stuck sitting at rock bottom. Whereas princess Carolyn's loneliness comes from her working too hard. Yeah. And focusing to hall again, you know, right. So doesn't give I, herself time to get close to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's sort of, the yeah there's also another interesting theme that's brought up in this episode too which is the idea of like you know why does princess carolyn keep bojack on as a client you know what i mean because it's Mm -hmm. like he's not getting any work he doesn't make their company any money like the the guy in charge of their agency like says that to her he's like yeah we're gonna drop bojack because he doesn't make us any money and she's mm-hmm. like, no, no, but she still has some sort of like connection where she feels like she has to stick with him and try to, you know, yeah, it's almost, carry him along. He's almost like a project for her. Yeah, yeah. It's like, you know, she kind of has this view that like if I can get him, pull him through, then like mm-hmm. that shows that I'm like the best, at, you know, whatever at the job or whatever. But also she probably also has developed like some sort of like, like she actually cares for him too, I think to an extent. Um, not in like like a, a, they're kind of like a, like dipoles, you know, they're exact opposites. And so they kind of attach to each other and they're, they're stuck. Yeah. 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 Yeah, exactly. Even if like, it's like, even if they're not in a relationship anymore, they're still like involved involved with each other yeah in some mm-hmm. way this episode also introduced my favorite character <laughs> the tree frog oh yeah what was his name charlie or something where he just kept yep. getting his hands stuck to things like i got my tie stuck in the copier this morning it's like if i flip it it looks like the tie it looks like the tie is dancing it's... and then at the end he's like oh congratulations charlie it seems like they picked up your t- dancing tie show <laughs> thanks dad yeah so it's pretty clear that he got the job because of nepotism mm-hmm. um and not because of his actual skill i, I uh, just love him because he's such a screw up and he's like uh he's nervous Dad, about everything I, what do Dad. i do mm-hmm. my hands are just so sticky sorry 
He picks up the phone. Hello? I'm sorry. I, I think I put you on mute. Help, I can't put the phone down. <laughs> yep, yep. Um, but yeah, in this episode, there's a point where Bojack leaves to go to Malibu to see Herb mm-hmm. Kazaz. And at the end of the episode, Princess Carolyn calls him and, you know, again is like. Hey. Well, well, right. This, it's split up into two parts in two different episodes, right? So yeah. The first yeah. part is Princess Carolyn's and then Bojack's viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like, and 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 she's like, "Hey, I got you a job like you wanted," and he's just like, uh, "I don't care anymore. That doesn't matter. Nothing matters, you know, whatever." Mm-hmm. She's just like, "What happened in Malibu?" And then it, the next episode shows what happened. Yeah. Um. So we can get into that next one if you want. Um. I just so, yeah. wanted to mention Charlie. Yeah, Char- <laughs> Charlie's great. Um. There's <laughs> a lot of hands. this show is pretty good at adding like little side characters that are funny like Mm -hmm. it 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 does pretty good with that next episode is the telescope which is when he goes to see herb kazaz because like the telescope is that like the like herb gave him the telescope so that's why it's called that um basically he goes to see herb because you know herb is has cancer cancer. as we found well we found out about that in the sarah lynn episode yeah because Sarah Lynn told him, and he didn't, because he didn't know before. So basically, they, you <laughs> remind me. They only ever called it butt cancer, right? They never called it prostate cancer, because like it's pretty clear that it is, right? But they only ever I called it butt think cancer. They did at one point. I don't remember. I I really don't remember exactly. I think they might have like called it, or maybe it was like colon cancer or something. I don't really know. Mm. But it's some, something like that. I love the part where he's just like. Does the does the rectal cancer and the gay thing have anything to do with each other? Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have asked. Stupid question, Ali. <laughs> but that's a mimic of like a flashback part because he goes and he says, like, "Oh yeah." So about the gay thing, do you like ever get do like you guys ever line up on like a really long train or like a circle? Because if I decided, I would do that all. The- okay, no stupid question, Ali. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so you get the the backstory. Uh, it starts in the eighties where like him and Herb met for the first time. Mm-hmm. At or, a little comedy club, and he's yeah. heckling you, Bojack. Yeah, um, but yeah, yeah. So, I, I one thing I love is whenever they do like a flashback to like the eighties or the nineties, they have like obvious eighties things. Yes. Like he's singing a song. It's an eighties song. It was an eighties. And then when the they, and then when they get to the nineties part, he's like, he's singing the song. He's like, generic nineties grunge song. Mm-hmm. It's like mimicking like <laughs> everybody's wearing flannel, like <laughs> mimicking like Nirvana and stuff like that. Bands like yeah. that, like, like whenever they, and then there's like signs in the background for like just eighties thing, like <laughs> things that are so eighties, you know, it's just mm-hmm. or like nineties or whatever decade it is. Just it's like. Funny dramatically extremely and stupidly driving home that it's a different time period Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) um but yeah so they meet uh they become best friends and Mm -hmm. they also will along along the way the dear girl i don't remember her name comes uh, in and so they're at that tree um for yeah a while. her name is um oh gosh why i know her name i just can't remember it um is it like we are bad at names it's like charlene maybe is that it maybe yeah i don't know it's so she was familiar so she's dating herb right mm-hmm. and then when they like leave and when she leaves to go to maine she's like i'm moving to maine or whatever and he's like what about Herb? And she's like, yeah, I don't think I'm what he's looking for. So, which is a clear, you know, sign that like he's gay, yeah, right? Yeah. Like, um, so and then there's that moment. I think it's at the end of the uh, flashback that Herb kisses Bojack. And we're just like, wait, whoa, whoa. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a lot of like little, little things like that. Hence until you get to the, that point. But so he so he's with um the, i like the co- little conversation that charlene has or she's like the tar pit thing where she's like oh right you're just sinking in tar which is that was a little weird though because i was like wait 
is there literally just a tar pit in LA there in this show at least where like people are literally just there sinking and it's just kind of there. I, I always found that part kind of weird. It's like, okay, I mean, no one be surprised. Interesting. <laughs> I mean, this show does a lot of weird, like a lot of weird things happen in the show, so it makes sense. Here, I guess. LA tar. Pits. I. Doubt I, it's probably just a thing for this show. A gateway back to the Ice Age, right in the heart of LA, witness science in action at LA Bray Tar Pits. Oh, so okay. no, yeah, they are a real thing. Yeah. Oh, and they have like statues of like animals, like they had in the show. Oh, so those are statues. Okay, so that makes yeah, more yeah. sense. I was confused. I was like, is that like a real person just sinking in the tar pit? I was like, what? No, I think it was just statues, oh. yeah. So, okay, <laughs> that makes so much more sense. I was like, nobody's like doing anything about that. They're just like, yeah, that guy's just sinking in the tar pit. And it's fine. I don't <laughs> well, know. It he, didn't look like no, a no, statue no. to me. I don't know well, why. Yeah. But he. Well, but they weren't moving like, either. So yeah, I was like, I get I what you mean. Because it looked <laughs> very realistic with the art style that they were yeah. doing. So I've probably seen season one like three or four times now, and I still was so confused about that yeah, till now. They just have like statues of like elephants and like mammoths yeah. and stuff like sinking in this tar. Right. But obviously, cool. obviously in this world, the elephants and stuff would be like humanoid elephants and stuff. Cause that's how the yeah. world works. Yeah. Yeah. So apparently there's just giant tar pits around LA or maybe it's just one. Yeah. That's, I actually did not know that. That's interesting. I, I wasn't sure. Like I always wondered about that. I was like, is that like a real th- like whenever I watch the show is like is that a real thing or is that just like something mm-hmm. in the show? But yeah, so the metaphor also works in real life. There you go. Uh, but yeah, no, that's a pretty significant moment. And then there's like, yeah, so and she becomes important later on too. Not even just at the end of the season where he has like the weird dream, but like also like later on in the show too. But anyways, that's beside the point Mm -hmm. um so then you you get into the story so they you see the them climbing to the top you know they finally get the show and and herb's like you know i made sure that you were the 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 person they cast for the show and 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 you see the progression of like and he tell you know because he tells like how the progression of like what happened Mm -hmm. um and it's actually really, yeah. So basically, Herb, you know, this is in the '90s. Being gay isn't as accepted as it is now. Yeah. They I, they find I do, out. I do. I, I like the way they portrayed it, Herb getting fired because it wasn't malicious from the company's standpoint. Because the lady that was talking to Bojack about him needing to be fired and that, you know, Bojack, you're not going to do the thing where if he goes, you go, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She just said it. She came right out and said it. They're like, every day that we keep her bond, we are losing money. Yeah. She's like, we don't, it wasn't, it was 100% a business choice. It wasn't, we don't like that he's gay. We're doing it because the public doesn't like that he's gay, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Which is, it's interesting. And that's, that's the sad part about it is a lot of times decisions like that are made 100% purely through a business standpoint, Mm -hmm. not from what's right or what's wrong, you know, the Um, the money's often more important than the morals, which actually goes back to, uh, fight club. Cause mm. he was, he judged whether they needed to recall cars and he literally explained it to a lady on the plane that he was on that, like, if it costs less money to just let the defect go and let it hurt people, then they'll just do that. Yeah. Yeah. And it's it's kind of messed up when you realize how it, it, it's how, like, businesses are so set up to focus on profit and nothing else Mm -hmm. to where every decision is based on profit. Nothing's based on like morals or whatever. It's based on profit. Like, I don't know if you remember when like Disney 
temporarily fired the uh, James Gunn, the guy who directed the the um, Guardians of the Galaxy movies. I don't remember that at all. So I basically, they heard of that. they temporarily fired him. They ended up get bringing him back because a lot of people didn't like it. Mm. Um, they temporarily did because they found like it was coming out that there was a bunch of like tweets that he had from like ten years ago that were like really dark bad like like jokes that were probably not you know good like there was like mm. rape jokes and stuff like that whatever like you know and he had had since apologized for it. he's like yeah i was just like edgy back then you know whatever it was like 10 years before this happened so they fired yeah. him but the thing is it's like wait a minute you're disney you probably did a f- thorough background check you probably knew about it mm-hmm. beforehand but you hired him in the first place so your decision isn't based on a moral reason it's based on oh now the public this knows might make that. us this might make us look bad because now everybody knows about it so let's fight you yeah. know but then as soon as every uh, everybody complains about it because they're like oh it was just jokes he made back then he's a good director you should bring him back on as soon as enough people in the public were against it then they brought him back on yeah so it's sort of like this decision was based solely on what's better for the brand and the company and our image rather than actual moral standings you know Mm -hmm. um but anyways it's fucked we can move on uh to this but but yeah so bojack makes probably the wrong decision doesn't stand with herb and because he's he basically said he's like hey you should threaten to walk and leave the show Mm -hmm. if they fire me and then agrees to it he's like yeah we're but then this, this woman together. comes in and like convinces him otherwise. Yeah. Um <clears throat> and it's something that he like always regrets since then. Mm-hmm. Um which makes him going to see Herb again now really difficult. Uh and it's yeah, so anyways, they he goes they go to actually meet Herb and I I love how like open Herb is about like how he feels like he's what he just like mm-hmm. ha 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 it's funny it's like it's like oh yeah you want a knife oh i have one from when the one you left in my back and like he just doesn't care he's just making jokes about how he stabbed yeah. him in the back <laughs> like <laughs> I, I think isn't there a point in the flashback where bojack was like well yeah it's like he's saying like commenting on his comedy routine it's like he's saying all this stuff that i you know never had the guts to say and mm-hmm. how he's still doing that yeah, yeah, yeah. He's very, he's a, he's very like blatant about his feelings, kind of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Especially, I feel like at this point where he's like, I'm probably gonna die soon, anyways. I got nothing to lose. I'm gonna be yeah. honest, you know. Um, but yeah, so they 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 start talking, and eventually they start to actually get along. And it, it's interesting because you can kind of see like, you know, why they became friends. Like their their personalities get along really well together. Mm-hmm. You know, they 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 both really like criticizing things well, yeah, <laughs> diane just kind of points out like the juice master or whatever it is and they both immediately start complaining <laughs> kinda, and making jokes about it together. because juice and juice controls the media <laughs> and he's laughing about that for the rest of the day yeah. well you see like one of the one of the earlier conversations that they have there it's like they're having that whole argument about like they're, where they're like what why do people say here's the thing why do you have to introduce introduce the idea that there's going to be the uh, be a thing? Just say the thing. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I love those conversations because they're so right, but they're also so pointless. Because like, who cares? Like saying here's the thing doesn't actually matter. Yeah, you know, it's like what, why do you yeah. care so much? Um, but yeah, no, that's I mean that's part of how they get along so well because they both like criticizing things like that. <laughs> Every mm. little thing like that. <laughs> Um, like when Bojack criticizes Honeydew in the fruit bowl, you know, mm-hmm. um, that becomes a reoccurring thing throughout the show too. That he doesn't like Honeydew. Yes. <laughs> um, because I don't know if you remember that from the one episode. I do. Yeah. Yeah. And then Mr. Peanut Butter was like, "Yeah, I Honeydew like this." Like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyways, so. It seems like everything's left on like a positive note and he's leaving and he's like, you know, Bojack, I actually did really like seeing you. And 
Bojack, Bojack goes to apologize for everything. can't leave good enough alone. He's like, he's like, I have to pop. He, he feels the need. Like he has to apologize. Cause I mean, he is sorry for what he did, you know, mm-hmm. uh, he's felt bad for it about the past 20 years or I think, yeah, they said it was 20 years. Cause yeah, yeah, that would make sense. Cause this sh- season came out in 2014, which would be 20 years would be 94, which yeah, the, the show was in the nineties. So that makes sense. Um, yeah. So it's like 20 years later. Um, so he goes in to apologize and I love how they play it. Like they could have gone with the easy answer of he's like, Oh, I totally forgive you. And then they, they move Mm -hmm. on all happy, perfect, whatever. But he doesn't, he goes, I don't forgive you. And it's like, and, and this, this really drives home like one of the big kind of themes of the show, which is that like things from your past, bad things you've done in the past still haunt you. Like you can't just be done with it and move on necessarily. It's like things, you know, um, you know, like he never gets closure for the bad thing he did. He, he, he right. lives the He will live the rest of his life knowing that he did this terrible thing. And, his he never forgave him you know and i do like the fact that it he even said that like this isn't because of the job it's because you never called me in the last 20 he's like years. yeah he's like what i i needed a friend at the time he's like that was a hard time for me i needed a friend and you never mm-hmm. you know where that you know um yeah and it's yeah yeah it's really poignant moment because he yeah because and because he even says he's like He's like, I didn't just sit around moping around about like that. Like I had a good life since then. I did a lot of great things since then. But like at the time it was really hard and I needed a friend and like you weren't there for me. And yeah. And it's, it's stuff. It is. Yeah. This, this I think is where the, it really starts to get like heavy into that kind of stuff. Um, And it's this common thing throughout the whole show. You kind of see that Bojack does a lot of like shitty things and regrets it. And he, he kind of carries that with him. Mm-hmm. And it's like this huge thing. It's like, you know, bad things he's done in the past come back to haunt him different at different points in the show. And like, there's just a lot of different, like, it, you know, that's a common thing theme. And I think this is one of the first real big poignant moments of that. Um, and, one thing I don't, and one thing I, um, you probably don't know this, but there's this common thing where, um, the F word is only said once in every season of this show. Oh, really? So he said, so what Herb, that was in this episode, Herb goes, now get the, get the fuck out of my house, right? Right. Um, and I, I think the reason they do that is so that, like, it doesn't it's a, lose its potency. Yeah. So every time it's said, you know that's like a big important moment. You know that's like an oh shit like moment. Like yeah, he messed up. Um. So yeah. So they they placed it here because you know this is that that you know. Yeah. Um. So yeah, this is probably one of the best episodes of the first season. I think. I I think I would agree. Yeah, I it's hard to say whether it's is my favorite. It's probably one like top like two of the season. I think for sure. I would say, um, mm. you know, it does a really good job at going into the backstory of him and Herb, and then just the ending is just really poignant as well. Um, and there's that whole side plot with Todd, um, meeting Remind those me. To remember, she, he's like trying oh. to park the car. Shut up and drive. I can't. I mean, I, I this is more like a three hundred point turn at this point. Am I right? <laughs> remember our rule: never fall in love. That's your rule for everything. That's your rule it's for a good everything. Rule. It's a good rule. Why don't you take just... off your mask? Fine, you only take off mask there. Are you sure you took off mask? Because I think you're still wearing one. Uh, uh, and then <laughs> they just leave without Todd. Like you see mm-hmm. them pulling away from Herb's house and Todd is just still laying there in the grass. <laughs> well, because like, well, like they were having like a nice moment laying in the grass, looking up at the sky. 
And then Todd just goes, wow, I feel like I'm finally, like, letting my guard down. And they both jump out. You hear that? He's letting his dark guard down and beat him up and run. Like, what? <laughs> Again, there's a lot of these, like, just random Todd shenanigans going on in yeah. the show. That really don't relate to the rest of the show, but they're just kind of there. Mm-hmm. Just, just to... Just for fun, and I really like them a lot. Like it's it's great comedic <laughs> relief from yeah. like the heavy stuff that they talk about yeah. every episode. Yeah, exactly. I I love Todd. Um, and next, uh, oh yeah. Also, this episode ends with a really poignant moment as well, which is Sabo right. Jack kissing Diane, which is mm. like. Yeah. yeah. Not not his best move. Probably shouldn't just kiss somebody who's engaged, but you know, yeah. whatever. Um yeah. So, we can move on to the next episode if you want. Yeah, yeah. So the next one is Horse Majeur. I, I don't know how to pronounce that word. Majeur. Majeur. This is supposed and- to be like French. I I think so. I think it's a French word. It's M A J E U R E. You took French, right? Yeah. You used to talk about it all the time. Yeah, I I I took French one and two mm-hmm. uh, in college. I you I don't, don't know majeur. Majeur. I mean, yeah, I don't. I don't. It looks French. I'm assuming it's French. I don't know. Mm. Anyways, um, so this in this this is the episode where Bojack is trying to sabotage their wedding. Right. Um, That's at first in six months. Well, at first, yeah, yeah. And then in like a week and then like next Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> they keep moving it up yeah. as he's trying to sabotage. Well, yeah, and a part of the sabotage, he gets like Todd ends up being hired as, as um, Mr. Driver. Peanut Butter's driver. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what? Side note. I love that Mr. Peanut Butter's license plate says good boy. (laughs) Uh, I also love that the reason he needs a driver is because he lost his license because he was chasing the mailman. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Again, these little like animal jokes are just... uh, (laughs) Mr. Peanut Butter has some really strong opinions on sticks. (laughs) Like... (laughs) Um, I, I, think, I do love his franticness about sticks too, because he's like, you know, today it's you know short and stubby, but tomorrow my favorite might be something else. <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> Mr. Peanut Butter is a really fun character because he's just so he's he's like he's, he's a golden he's, retriever. Yeah, he's it, yes, it, golden retrievers are great, mm-hmm. but he he's a good. Boy. Sort of, what? You said he's a good, so I finished a good with boy. boy. A good boy. I mean, you. I thought you were the goodest boy, though. Yeah. I don't know. He's, no, he's he's a good boy. What are you talking about? He's a good um, sort of like foil for like BoJack's character, kind of like he's a good like because because like they both have a very similar like they had a similar career, mm-hmm. but it's sort of different because like so because like BoJack is cynical and depressed all the time bojax is not a zelda yeah yes whereas <laughs> exactly whereas mr peanut butter is like always happy always you know looking at the best in everyone he's always like like a golden retriever yeah which they do a really good job at matching animals like with yeah, yeah. like i think each animal fits the character like especially him like he's like a dog fits Mr. Peanut Butter's character so well, you know? Yeah. Um, he's, he's happy all the time. He's, you know, constantly like, I love, I love like them matching his facial expressions to his emotions because <laughs> they're dog facial expressions. His ears perk up or drop low yeah. and his, he hangs his tongue out and he starts panting. Yeah. 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 No, I, I like a lot of those little details. Like I think, Like, the thing is, technically speaking, you could make this same show, like, the same story with just human characters. 
Yeah, but it adds. But it, uh, I think the animal thing really adds a lot yeah, to it. It really it adds a lot of details and little <clears throat> like intricacies. Yeah, I think it makes it much more interesting. Um, but yeah, so um, yeah, so he tries to sabotage the wedding um, in this episode, and he I love he hires Margot Martindale again, character actress Margot Martindale again. Mm-hmm. To um, rob a bank. <laughs> I love how she's like, I don't know, Bojack. And she he's just like, Come on. <laughs> he's like, she's like, and then he's like, Come on, this is the role you were born to play. You know, it's guerrilla theater. No, no stage, no cameras. And she's like, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> like it shows that like her love for acting is not just like mm-hmm. it's more just like she just enjoys becoming a different character. And like she Did, wants to didn't he also mention like he went like you know you're a female actor you know you bit you would be put up on stage just in you know all those generic roles you know but I want to put an eight gig four or seven in your hands and have you go rob that bank <laughs> yeah and she's just like well I do hate the limitations of you know misogynistic whatever the hell I she do said. hate the limitations of theater and film or you know whatever she yeah. says. <laughs> Yeah, uh, such a great character. I love mm-hmm. um, but I love how the plan completely backfires. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> she steal the ring, and there she's just like, "No, take the ring." <laughs> but doesn't that represent talented. your love? Yeah, but why do we need a representation of love when we have the real thing? And it's like, in fact. Why are we waiting to get married? Why don't we get married this Saturday? <laughs> mm-hmm. And she gives the ring back. I'm like, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> and she gets tackled by the police. And I love the electric eel carrying a taser, just slowly walking up behind to taser. Oh, yeah. Of course, the electric eel is the one with the taser. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it doesn't even need a taser, technically. Like, you know, if you're an electric eel, I mean. I always forget whether... Because there are quite a lot of things that uh, they're not actually electric; they're just venomous, and so it feels like electricity, like the sort no, of pain they are. They generate. I've looked it up. They actually do produce electricity. Like yeah. I don't know exactly how it works. I, I've looked, I've looked it up before. Like I've or watched something about it before. Like how electric eels produce electricity. I forget how it works, but it is an mm-hmm. actual electric shock. Ooh, neat. So yeah, it is. I wonder if um, it would, I guess it should, well, hmm. And I'm not... I'm wondering if it would work out of water. Because, you know, water would obviously help that along to, you know, actually mm-hmm. shock, at least from a distance. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I don't know. Hmm. Also, is this... It might this... be, like, in contact if it's out of water. Yeah, yeah, I don't really know. Also, is this the episode where Princess Carolyn meets Vincent Adult Man? Yes, I think it is. Who's very clearly just three kids in a trench coat. Which but like I, Bojack's the only person who ever notices that? He's like... Mm-hmm. Oh. Now, now so, I'm not sure if you want to spoil this or not, but I am going to ask you a question right now. I get the feeling that they're just going to turn that on its head in a later season. Like, no, he is actually an adult guy. Um, you'll find out. Okay. Um, cause like they, they're would... setting that up so well for him to actually end up as just a dude. Um, yeah, N- uh, probably not. Mm-hmm. Um, actually no. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's. I I do love his acting too. Like I uh, do business transactions. What do you like to do? Business uh, transactions. Uh... Good luck with your business transactions. Thanks. All he ever wants to do is watch R-rated movies and what I don't know whatever she said. Yeah, yeah. Because you know, right. kid, a kid kid pretending to be an adult is just kind of like mm-hmm. R-rated movies. Yeah. <laughs> Or when they break up later and he comes back and he's just like, I'm sorry, I want to be a big man, but 
then I blah 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 and I went into a timeout and now I'm back and you know I <laughs> blah 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 <laughs> yeah just using like such like little kid words like timeout and you know just random like, like uh, it's, yeah it's, it's hilarious uh <laughs> She's, it's what is clearly just three kids stacked on top of each other in a trench coat. They're just doing the thing from Little Rascals. Um, yeah. Um, or then they go on vacation later and he, she holds up a swimsuit and he holds up like a floral trench coat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, jeez. Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, what, what episode were we talking I just, about? I just love a lot of the little gags. Oh, the one, the wedding one. Right, right. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if there, I have a lot else to say about it. I think but it, it, it's interesting because it's like by the end, I think BoJack finally like fully, you know, his feelings. comes to the realize, ac- accepts and comes to the realization that like, you know, she's happy with him and like, the, you know. Mm his feelings for her aren't, you know, anything. Yeah. And they, they're, they're good as friends, but that's it kind of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, which oh, is definitely. He... No, does... wait. This episode just ends in the, at like at the wedding, right? Or was there also like the after party or something? I think so. I, I I'm pretty sure there was. Is this so? Is this the episode that ends with him getting the role as a? Oh yeah, as Mr. Gosh. Peanut Butter. Oh right, that. I can't believe I forgot about that little arc of the story. I skipped over to the yeah. next movie. Oh okay. yeah, no, that's that's at the last episode of of the season. Right, right. Yeah, um, yeah. So the, that's that is so the next episode is. One Trick Pony. Right. Episode 10. And making the movie and his memoir comes out or is finished. Yeah. And he doesn't like the results because mm-hmm. it's sort of like paints him in a negative light. Not, but like, it's interesting because it's like, she literally does just kind of state the truth kind of. Yeah. And they said that from the beginning is like, he's like, all right, the truth warts, warts and all. all. Mm-hmm. and that's kind of what it is and he's and it's like i think the reason why bojack's so against it at first is because it's he gets this reflection of what is what he who he really is and he likes to hide and pretend that he's like a really good person yeah when he's done all these bad things and he's spent you know well the memoir even portrays like why he's doing it kind of because it's never like he's just doing this to be an asshole. It's like, yeah, he's a complicated person and, yeah. you know, he's in a bad place in his life and he's struggling. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. But yeah, so also during this episode, so that's sort of like the whole like the book coming out and stuff is sort of in the episode while the whole movie thing is happening. So. Mm-hmm. Of course, mm-hmm. Hollywood just decides, yeah, let's make a movie about that time that guy stole a D from the Hollywood sign. Um, except, I mean, if someone actually did that, I'd watch it. Yeah. It's, I think it's funny that, like, they get somebody to play Bojack Horseman. Who is even isn't though, Bojack Horseman? Like, Bojack Horseman is playing a in a movie where there there's a character of Bojack Horseman, but he's not the one playing mm-hmm. himself. Like, despite the fact that like, you know, he's an actor and he is himself. Maybe he could play himself. Like maybe he just, could play himself. Like, maybe I don't know. It's just weird. <laughs> oh, and then I love, they have Quentin Tarantulino. It's literally just supposed to be Quentin Tarantino, but, Oh, <laughs> I am put that together. Turns out I Quentin remember. Turns out Quentin Tarantulino always wanted to direct a rom com. <laughs> which is so weird because like, you know, obviously Quentin Tarantino is known for doing a lot of like really 
violent, intense, like, you know, action movies and like, you know, I, I stuff like know. that. I don't know. I don't follow these things. You the movie man, man. Um, <laughs> but no, it's, 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 it's funny. And then Todd's movie suggestions are just like, he, they start, they start changing the movie until it's mm. literally, it's a bi-monthly <laughs> snack, snack basket. basket. <laughs> That's what the movie is. <laughs> um, and then the turtle, the old turtle guy, he's like a movie producer. He comes, in, he's like, "What happened to the movie, Lenny Turtle Tom?" <laughs> he he's voiced he's voiced by one. I think he's the guy from Whiplash, right? The oh wait, maybe he is. I'm pretty yeah, sure actually- because my brain went. I know that voice. Who is that voice? That's Cave Johnson from Portal. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I need to look this up to make sure. And it was, and it showed like, he's Cave Johnson from Portal. Oh, he's like the guy from Whiplash. J.K. Yeah, so it is J.K. Simmons. He's, uh, yeah. Uh, J. Jonah Jameson. Yeah, J. Jonah Jameson from Spider-Man. He's in. Yep. He's, uh, a ton of stuff. But, he's in this new, this newer show, Invincible. You've probably oh, heard, right, heard right. of him. He's in he's, that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I no, do I, have to mention, I told you before that uh, Portal 2 has the single best monologue ever. It uh, is done okay. by Cave Johnson, that man. J- so by... just imagine that voice in an amazing monologue. I'm not going to tell uh, you what it is because I need you to experience it firsthand. I love J.K. Simmons. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, no, he's he's good. He's also he was also in a lot of those State Farm commercials. All right. <laughs> um, yeah, no, he's he's great. <laughs> just just <laughs> imagining Cave Johnson's voice coming out of a State Farm commercial is hilarious to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I how did I never realize that that was that Lenny Turtle Tob was J.K. Simmons? The only way like, I realized it is because my brain was like, "That's Cave Johnson." I like know now, Cave Johnson. like now that you mention it, and I think about his voice, I'm like, "Yeah, that's I, I like that's that's so clearly mm-hmm. J.K. Simmons." But There's I guess it's 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 the accent. I think it's I like, yeah that you like recognize yeah yeah just by voices. Um, I think like it's his, his mother. I can't remember who that woman is or her <sighs> name, but I know like the voice. I don't know. I, I I don't know if I know the voice from somewhere else, but I don't know. Well, the voice of BoJack himself. Um, I don't know if you ever watched like the Lego Movie. Uh, yes, the first but he's, one. It's the voice. He it's the same voice who voices Batman in the Lego Movie. Uh, uh Will Arnett. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Uh. Anyways. Yeah, yeah, I guess I guess the reason I never noticed that Lenny Turtle Tob was J.K. Simmons is because like he does like a different accent, right? Like he does like the the stereotypical like Jewish accent, I guess. Uh, <laughs> like the. I I think I've gotten used to like seeing through accents at this point because like with watching Critical Role, you know, a bunch of nerdy yes voice actors playing Dungeons and Dragons. Mm-hmm. I've learned to be able to recognize their voices past the characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't know if you have much else to say about that epi- this episode. I mean, I guess like... I don't know. So... They... they the movie turns into this snack box, which is just hilarious. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, oh, also, I love the woman who plays Diane in the movie. She's like, I. They're just giving me all these complex female character roles. I want to be play somebody who's one dimensional. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> that's just hilarious. Mm. I I I got into this business to be in roles like this, <laughs> one dimensional uh, rom com characters. <laughs> like <laughs> it's yeah, it's it's a very drastic parody, and it's pretty funny. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we can move on if you want. Uh, what's next? Eight, nine, eleven. Oh, ele- 
Oh, that was I 10. We were going slower. No, that was 10. So next is 11, which is downer ending. Um, which is these names don't give me any recollection of what yeah. these episodes were. So this is a pretty simple one to just to 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 remember. Uh, it's the drug trip episode. Right. So Bojack like basically is like ah I'm I'm gonna try to write a book in, in a week instead and mm-hmm. and he gets Sarah Lynn and and uh, Who Todd to help. And, Doctor Who. <laughs> oh yeah, Doctor Who. <laughs> and no one knows who Doctor Who is. Except for Bojack. He's trying to yeah. explain. Nobody knows this extremely popular BBC show about a time traveling uh <laughs> time traveling doctor. Who saves civilizations. No. Nobody that Doctor Who. I'm Doctor Who, not you. <laughs> um but yeah. I love the part where he's like going over the drugs. He's like, so take this one. I'll take only two of these every this hour. Take this, take this. And as he's handing them, he's giving them specific instructions on how to take them. Every time he hands it to him, Sarah Lynn just takes it, downs all of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> she just, as he's telling her all this, like, it's like, wow, she really has a problem. Um, yeah. And uh, <laughs> the remark that he leaves on. She's like, well, I just have to go and do child heart surgery. Ugh. And then he just takes a but takes some drugs for that. Like, mm-hmm. all right. <laughs> is that is that what all of our uh, surgeons is that what surgeons do or is this? Uh, uh, hmm. No, I, I I'm pretty sure it's not. Um, I hope so at least. <laughs> probably a few. Probably a few. Yeah. Um, so there's a few bad apples in the bunch. Yeah, no, I love though the drug trips going on here. Right. So it like, starts. There's even, there's even a moment where they're like typing on the computer, and he Bojack says something, and the world kind of warps for a bit, and he continues Continue. his conversation. It's like that was like four hours ago. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's interesting, and then there's like that whole thing where they're like. Is this a broom or a gun? What's going on? We better Maybe we shoot sh- at each other at the same time to figure it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he like gets he's he pulls out he pulls out the gun. He's like, relax. It's just it's just my it's just a lighter. And then he shoots. And then he just like goes to light a cigarette. Psh, he shoots. <sighs> oh, then where's my lighter? And, and where's my lighter? That baby. <laughs> What oh. baby? What are you talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, but yeah, it goes into the eventually the the drug trips devolve into mostly Bojack's and, yeah shapes drug and trips colors and like his and it's focus memories. yeah focusing on Bojack's anxieties and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which is really it it's done really well and you kind of see a lot of his, like the way he sees himself and like a lot of his like, yeah, inner thoughts and stuff. It's, it's really interesting. Mm -hmm. There's one moment where I really like how they did this because they showed like, you know, four days later and he wakes up and you think, okay, he's out of it. He's, his trip is done. Yeah. Diane Diane comes comes in. in and she starts warping into a monster and it's like, actually, two minutes later and you're like oh okay like never they mind use, they use like this separate like be on the fourth wall title card like time skip card mm-hmm. to trick you like yeah like, you're like no that's 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 beyond the fourth wall you, you shouldn't be affected by that but no it is yep yep oh he's like oh i'm still tripping or i like how like he's there and he's like on like a white background and then all of a sudden all of his outlines disappear. He's like, mm-hmm. Oh, I don't have outlines. <laughs> There's nothing separating me from the rest of the world. And then he's just and like, he's like <laughs> leaking out. Uh, and then there's the part where like he, he, he's running and like his drawing of himself becomes like less detailed, less detailed until it ends up being like a stick figure. And, and then, then it just gets erased and like, um, but yeah, no, there's a lot of, 
I, I don't know. It, it's it's very like this is this part of it. It gets like very like anxiety inducing. Yeah, because it's like you see like all, how all of his anxious feelings and stuff, and then it slows down for an entire like scene of like what his life could be like. Right with, with dear lady. Yeah, with uh, is it? Did you say Char- Cheyenne? Is it, no, I think Charlotte? it's Charlotte. Charlotte, Charlotte, I think. I, I've seen the show enough. I feel like I should remember, but. Oh, Jack Horseman. <laughs> Ear. Name? I think it's Charlotte. Charlotte. Charlotte Carson. Yeah, yeah Charlotte. Um, anyways, so he kind of imagines a life he could have had if he ended up with her. Um. And like them having a kid together. And it's actually a really nice, like, little thing. It, like, it seems really nice and peaceful and stuff. And then it cuts off at the end where she's like, Imagine, imagine if you had chosen this life. And it just kind of like goes back to reality. Mm-hmm. And he's and like it's, doubled over, like, in a parking lot, yeah. collapsed. And. Then how the episode ends, I think, is really poignant, too. So, like, he goes to the the ghost writer convention, oh, right. uh, which is actually kind of funny. Mm-hmm. What kind of ghosts do you like writing for? <laughs> because the oh, entire this... point of a ghost writer is no one finds out that you've been ghost writing, right? Or who you've ghost yeah. written for. Yeah. Yeah. But they're like, no, that guy isn't here. His ghost writer is here. <laughs> but anyway, so Bojack bursts in to ask Diane a question, and he goes like, mm-hmm. "He's like, I'm sorry, you were right. We'll publish the book you wrote." And then he goes, and then he has that like, "So my question is, like, deep down, do you think I'm a good person? Like, am I? Is it too late for me?" And like, it's like this desperate like <sighs> moment. Yeah, he's like pleading for her to tell him that he's a good person. Tell me that I'm good, and then she doesn't say anything. Mm-hmm. And that's how the episode ends. And it's like, yeah, so that's, I guess that's why the episode's titled Downer Ending. Well, well, well I think you're missing a detail here. Because he's pleading with her, she says nothing, and then a guy in the background stands up and goes, Isn't that the horse from Horsin' Around? Oh, yeah. And then it ends. <laughs> that's right, that's right. Um, Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's really interesting. There's actually so there's actually an interesting theme throughout the whole show, mm-hmm. where the eleventh episode is like the most intense, dark, like oh shit moment type of episode. Oh, you probably should have told me that. Well, I think it's like the second to last episode because the last season it's not the eleventh episode because the last right, season is right. more more than 12 episodes, but it's like a very uh, common theme. Um, I mean, I get that like story structure wise. Well, right. Cause it's like the big final, it's like the, the darkest moment before the finale of the Yeah. Before things season. like settle slightly and set up for the next season. Yeah. Cause yeah. Cause if you're ready, we can move on to the last episode. Yep. Yep. So, because the last episode is, I don't, I don't remember what it's titled. Oh, like later. It's just titled later. Okay. Um, I mean, sure, that's a title. So, yeah, this episode is more or less going through a lot of the setup for the next season. Um, you kind of see, like, BoJack getting the role uh, to play Secretariat. That's um, what I was remembering before. Yeah, and you see a little bit of the aftermath of, like, the book, too. Like, where, like, you know, people right. know him for the book now. And, um, yeah. So, it's kind of been this thing hint thing throughout the whole show where he's, like, he's always wanted to play Secretariat in a movie. And that's, like, one of the main reasons he got into acting and, mm-hmm. and whatever. Um, and, like, Diane wrote a book about Secretariat and, like, you know, different things like that. Yeah. Um, I like the opening of the episode. I don't know if you remember the opening of the episode. 
Not particularly. But it's, it's showing back in like the 70s, I guess, or whatever. Uh, it's showing Secretariat on like oh. in a show being interviewed. Was it the same show or was it a different show? I, I that, don't. That was like Bojack, opened with Bojack. I don't. The first episode. Think so? I don't think so. I don't know. Oh. But it's a letter from Bojack. Yeah. It's a letter from Bojack because you know Bojack wrote in a letter and he was like, you know, I'm I'm sad. What do I do? If, what do you do if you're sad? And just keep running. Yep, just keep running. Don't and look it, back. It's interesting, and that's sort of like an interesting thing. So a lot of people have looked at that and said, like, you know, Bojack took that to heart in a way in his life because like he you know despite all the bad things he's done or the bad things that have happened or whatever he just keeps trying to move forward from it and like try to not pay attention to it try to forget the bad things that have happened before yeah it's like just keep running just keep going get you know it doesn't matter what happened in the past only that the only thing that matters is what's in the future um and it's not even like he's trying to move forward. He's just, he's more blindly moving forward. It's not like he's trying right. to make up for anything. He's just yeah. trying to get past it. And yeah. that's it. And then the episode there, that opening ends showing like a few months later, Secretariat, uh, well, jumping off a bridge. Yeah. It's uh, it's like okay, it's actually pretty intense. And like, well, also like it's showing like the there's like a radio thing going, and like, and in other news, uh, some mm-hmm. idiot parked his car on the bridge. But yeah, so but yeah, Heavy stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um, but the rest of the episode, it's showing BoJack working to try to get the get the role. Um, everybody's kind of like, oh, you're going to like play secretary. It's like father, <laughs> grandfather. Cause like, it's like, you're, you're a little too old for the role, but he just wants mm-hmm. to show how. Yeah. And I really like the, the part where he auditions and it's like, yeah. they see like, he brings his own sort of his own emotional state, like in his own life to what he's saying for the role. Yeah. Um, and that's why he got the role. Uh, well, originally well, it was Andrew Garfield. Andrew Garfield. But then oh. he fell down uh, Halloween in January because oh, yeah. he didn't have a floor and broke all of his bones. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Bojack, we want you to get in on the ground floor. See, that's the problem with your ideas. They don't have a ground floor. Show somebody <laughs> literally the <laughs> Halloween in January doesn't have a ground floor. Mm-hmm. I I do like it, like there was three times when someone fell down because at first it was like you know they fell and it cut kind of early I don't they might you might have heard him hit the ground but then the lady fell down and she hit the ground and they hear oh hello from the original guy and then the other time it's Andrew Garfield <laughs> and he just says love- something like some like generic like oh bother oh yeah. bother I've fallen down into an abyss because there was no floor here like what like yeah all your bones are broken oh bother (laughs) i love when they're pitching it to bojack they're like has this ever happened to you (laughs) no nor has it happened to anyone ever It's probably like only three people fell down. <laughs> they just, they see it. They're like, oh, Halloween in January. Oh, Halloween store for the rest of us. Just like they mentioned in their little presentation. <laughs> I love how he's like, oh, so this is like a Halloween store that's all open all year round. No. Nope. Oh, just January. January. <laughs> uh, I, I love the pairing of Todd and... Mr. Peanut Butter as characters like Mm -hmm. they go so well together because they're both so like they're both like the perfect characters to get into like wacky shenanigans you know yeah and it's like (laughs) Todd comes up with like scattered brain ideas while Mr. Pickles is just like full in whatever he says 
Yeah, Mr. Peanut Butter is just he's Mr. he's Mr. Pickles. Yeah, you did. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a different show. <laughs> no, Mr. Mr. Peanut Butter is so enthusiastic about everything, which is yeah. you know, again, he's a golden, golden retriever. retriever. <laughs> um, <laughs> like I love the I love the 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 episode where Todd becomes his driver, and he's just like whenever he's driving, he's like, we have like conversation. He's like. <laughs> Can't believe this weather we're having. No, I, know, right? I cannot believe this weather we're having. <laughs> Can you? <laughs> Just the only person in the world who actually likes small talk, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> who likes Everyone pointless small a talk. Friend like like a golden retriever. <laughs> Just loves everything. Yeah. Um, You're just full enthusiasm on the stupidest things. <laughs> yup. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if I have a lot more else to say about like this episode. So Bojack gets the, it, it, it sets up the next season. Bojack gets the, the role for secretariat. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. And then there's like a little montage at the end where it shows kind of like where all the characters are at. Penguin dude gets to see his family finally because (laughs) he finally has money. Yeah. Yeah. But the power still goes out. (laughs) Oh Yeah. Um, Princess Carolyn is still with Vincent Adult Man mm-hmm. um, and I don't remember what I guess like I don't know I don't remember everything but yeah neither do I I just remembered yeah. <laughs> the penguin finally has closure and gets to see his family from being threatened by whoever it was <sighs> Yeah, I, I like that commentary though, where they're like essentially like it's a book publishing business, and mm-hmm. it's like completely falling apart because like who reads books anymore, you know? Oh right. <laughs> they, I thought I saw someone reading a book on the in the park the other day, but it turns out it was just what he <laughs> said. Yeah, I forget. It was just like yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, but yeah, so then the it ends and sets up ready for the next season Mm because yeah the next season is like shows kind of them them going into like the production of the secretariat movie and stuff and so it sort of sets that up um yeah so anyways um so yeah final thoughts i guess um yeah like i said if i was watching it on my own i'd be on the brink of dropping, I you know teetering on the edge of continuing watching or dropping, but uh, it's not bad. I just don't really have much of an interest. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think like you said before, though, like the first, if every episode was like the first half of the season, you probably wouldn't yeah. want to. Like you'd In want fact, to drop if it earlier. Everything was like the second half of the season then I probably, you know, wouldn't be nearly as on the fence about it. Yeah, you'd be more interested. Yeah. Um, Yeah, no, it definitely does get better here from this point, like as it goes on. Because, yeah, and and I think it's really comes down to the fact that like at the beginning, the creators were still trying to like figure out what the show was. Right. um, And also you, you kind of it makes sense to almost start with a few episodes that aren't super important to the story either, just to kind of ease you into like getting to know the characters and the world and stuff too sometimes. So I do think you questioned when you brought up doing this, this particular show, whether I would enjoy the comedy style or not. Yes. And I have to say, I don't think I do. Like, I do appreciate a lot of the jokes, and they are pretty good, but yeah. they're not anything that would ever make me, like, laugh out loud. Like, I get chuckles out of them every once in a while, but that's Yeah, it. yeah. Yeah, I, I I like the comedy quite a bit. Um, some of, Like, some of it's, like, whatever. But, like, I like a lot of the – yeah, I like a lot of it, but – um. Yeah, I mean, the, the, yeah. you know, comedy really is just subjective, though. That's, like – it's yeah. hard to kind of just be like, it's like either you find it funny or you don't, you know, it's, it's just kind of, it's not much I to mean, say about it beyond that a lot of times. My version of comedy is pretty brain dead. I mean, I sent you the soup store thing 
yesterday. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, like yeah, two that's days right. Ago or something. That's right. Yeah. It's like, yeah, that is just brain dead, stupid but comedy. Honestly, though, I will say I like the comedy better than like, I think it does better than a lot of other like uh, adults animated comedy shows. Um, I don't, I haven't watched many. I mean, cause there's stuff like family guy and stuff like that, you know, where it's like, yeah. I don't know. I think, I think the comedy in this is, is almost better than that. It's almost more clever rather than just like, I think the only s- thing like within this, like adult comedy genre, animated genre that I've watched is a little bit of, uh, I slipped up and said Mr. Pickles a few minutes ago. What is it? Rick and Morty. That's that's the name. Oh, yeah. I I, 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 like I've seen a couple episodes of that. Seasons, but I've seen a much. couple episodes. Uh, what do you think of that show? Because like, I've only seen like a couple episodes. Yeah, I, I think I, I watched at least one full season. Maybe two or three. But that was it. And then I dropped it because I just kind of got bored. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I th- I don't know how, how many seasons are there now because it's like no I think it's closer to four, or five, something like that. I don't Rick know. Rick and Morty, a hundred years, hundred years. I turned myself into a pickle. <laughs> <laughs> All right, pickle Rick. Yeah, that was a big meme. Uh, mm. I didn't want. I've never seen that episode, but I know that meme because near <laughs> by. Yeah, that's just like that blew up for a while. Mm-hmm. That just mm-hmm. singular meme, and every once yeah. in a while it pops up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I guess in two weeks from now, we will talk about season two. Yeah. Of Bojack. And in a week. In a week Jumper. from now, we're gonna talk about Jumper from two thousand eight. Not gonna lie, I'm not super excited to see the movie. I, from looking at the images. Like just that single image of what must be like the like DVD cover of it. Mm-hmm. My brain was just like, I have a, I have a few ideas of what this could be. I don't think it's about jumping. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I've heard of it before. I think the jumper. It's because like it has to do with like people being able to like teleport, and they call it jumping or something yeah. like that. I yeah. think. If I remember from what I've heard, that's what it is. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll at least have something to talk about. So that'll be recommended next. by your friend that we had yeah. as a guest star. Yes, yes. It was recommended by Donnie last week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Shield of Hope. That was the name, right? That's his. Yeah, yeah. Well, because his last name is Shields. He's Donnie Shields. So is yeah. Shield that's of Hope. That's a cool ass last name. <laughs> Shields. Yeah. 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 Yep. Um. Anyways, so yeah, so next week will be Jumper, and the week after that will be BoJack season two, and then we'll see you after that. The next week after that will either be a, another guest or another movie. So we'll we'll have to wait and see. Mm. Um. But yeah, so I guess we're about ready to close here. Um. Thank you for listening to the Woban podcast. Um, there are many different places you can listen depending on, I don't know where you're listening now. Uh, you can listen to it on my YouTube channel, which is NIM TV and I am TV. Um, and you can also listen to it on multiple audio platforms. Uh, that being anchor breaker, Google podcasts, pocket casts, radio public, Spotify, and Apple podcasts. Um, so you can listen to it all those locations if you'd like just search for ban and you should be able to find it and it is released every uh, Saturday at noon Eastern Standard Time so that's when you can expect new episodes of Waban so anyways thank you for listening I've been Nim and I'm the goodest boy all right goodbye everyone <laughs>